To get the most out of this programming tutorial, I recommend first downloading the text file with step-by-step -step instructions from the Resources section. Try working through the project on your own before watching the video. Hands-on practice is the best way to quickly learn a new coding language. Step 1. Set up the React project. Create a new directory for your project. Open a terminal and navigate to the project directory. Run the command npx create react app my app to create a new react project called my app. Change to the project directory by running cd my app. Start the development server by running npm start. This will open a browser window with your React app running. Step 2. Create a new component. In the SRC folder, create a new file called mycomponent.js. Open mycomponent.js in your preferred code editor. Import React by adding import React from React at the top of the file. Create a functional component called myComponent using the arrow function syntax. Export the myComponent by adding export default myComponent at the bottom of the file. Step 3. Use the component in your app, OpenAppJDAYS. Import the my component component by adding import my component from slash my component ye at the top of the file. Inside the app component, add the my component, my component, JSX element where you want to use it. Step 4. Customize the component. Open My Component, Digest. Modify the JSX inside the My Component function to add your desired content, styling, or functionality. Step 5. Run and test your app. Save the changes to your files. Make sure the development server is still running in the terminal. Go to your browser window and refresh the page to see the changes. Test the behavior of your component and make any necessary adjustments. Lecture 2. To get the most out of this programming tutorial, I recommend first downloading the text file with step-by-step -step instructions from the Resources section. Try working through the project on your own before watching the video. Hands-on practice is the best way to quickly learn a new coding language. Step 1. Set up the project. Create a new React project using Create React App or your preferred method. Open your project in your preferred code editor.
Step 2. Create the counter component in the SRC folder. Create a new file called counter.ds. In counter.ds, import React and use state at the top of the file. Create a functional component called counter. Inside the counter component, declare a state variable called count using the useState hook. Initialize it to zero. Render a div element with the current count value inside it. Step 3. Add increment and decrement functionality. Inside the counter component, create two button elements below the count div. Label one button as increment and the other as decrement. Add an onClick event handler to the increment button. Inside the event handler, use the setCount function to increment the count state by one. Add an onClick event handler to the decrement button. Inside the event handler, use the setCount function to decrement the count state by one. Step 4. Update the app component. Open the app JJS file. Import the counter component at the top of the file. Render the counter component inside the app component. Step 5. Test the counter application. Start the development server by running npm, start or yarn start in your project's root directory. Open your web browser and visit http slash localhost 3000 to see the counter application. Click the increment button to increase the counter value. Verify that the count displayed on the page increases. Click the decrement button to decrease the counter value. Verify that the count displayed on the page decreases. Lecture 3. To get the most out of this programming tutorial, I recommend first downloading the text file with step-by-step -step instructions from the Resources section. Try working through the project on your own before watching the video. Hands-on practice is the best way to quickly learn a new coding language. Step 1. Set up the project. Set up a new React project using Create React App or your preferred method. Open your project in your preferred code editor.
Step 2. Create the TotoList component in the SRC folder. Create a new file called TotoList.js. In TotoList.js, import React and use state at the top of the file. Create a functional component called TotalList. Inside the TotalList component, declare a state variable called tasks using the useState hook. Initialize it to an empty array. Render a div element containing the title of the to do list. Step 3. Add task creation functionality. Inside the TotalList component, create an input element and a button element below the title. Add an onChange event handler to the input element to capture the user input. Store the input value in a state variable called newTask using the useState hook. Add an onClick event handler to the button element. Inside the event handler, create a new task object using the new task value and a unique identifier. Append this task object to the tasks state array using the setTasks function. Render the list of tasks using the map function on the tasks array. Display each task as a separate div element. Step 4. Add task deletion functionality inside the TotoList component. Add a delete task function that takes a task identifier as an argument.
implement the delete task function to filter out the task with the given identifier from the task's state array. Add a delete button for each task in the rendered list of tasks. Attach an on-click event handler to each delete button, passing the task identifier to the delete task function. When the delete button is clicked, the corresponding task should be removed from the task's state array. Step 5. Add task completion functionality inside the total list component. Add a complete task function that takes a task identifier as an argument. Implement the complete task function to find the task with the given identifier in the task's state array and toggle its completed property. Add a checkbox for each task in the rendered list of tasks. Attach an onChange event handler to each checkbox, passing the task identifier to the complete task function. When a checkbox is checked or unchecked, the corresponding task's completion status should be updated in the task's state array. Step 6. Update the app component. Open the app digest file. Import the total list component at the top of the file. Render the total list component inside the app component.
Step 7. Test the interactive to-do list application. Start the development server by running npm start or yarn start in your project's root directory. Open your web browser and visit http slash localhost 3000 to see the interactive to-do list application. Enter a task in the input field and click the add button. Verify that the task appears in the list. Click the delete button next to a task. Verify that the task is removed from the list. Check or uncheck a checkbox next to a task. Verify that the task's completion status is toggled. Lecture 4. To get the most out of this programming tutorial, I recommend first downloading the text file with step-by-step -step instructions from the Resources section. Try working through the project on your own before watching the video. Hands-on practice is the best way to quickly learn a new coding language. Step 1. Set up the project. Set up a new React project using Create React App or your preferred method. Open your project in your preferred code editor. Step 2. Create the shopping cart component. Create a new file called shoppingcart.js. Import React and use state at the top of the file. Create a functional component called shopping cart. Inside the shopping cart component, declare a state variable called cart items using the use state hook. Initialize it to an empty array. Render an empty shopping cart with a heading. Step 3. Display the cart items. Render the list of cart items based on the cart items state variable. Use the map method to iterate over the cart items array and render each item with its name and price. Step 4. Add item to the cart. Render a form with input fields for the item name and price, and a submit button labeled Add to Cart.
Add an onSubmit event handler to the form element. Inside the event handler, prevent the default form submission behavior. Get the values from the input fields and create a new item object with a unique ID. Update the cart item state variable by adding the new item object to the existing array of cart items. Step 5. Remove item from the cart. Render a remove button next to each item in the cart. Add an onClick event handler to the Remove button. Inside the event handler, filter out the selected item from the card items array using the filter method. Update the cart item state variable with the filtered array of items. Step 6. Calculate the total price. Create a function called calculate total price that calculates the total price of all items in the cart.
call the calculate total price function and display the total price below the list of items. Step 7. Empty the cart. Render a button labeled Empty Cart below the list of items. Add an on-click event handler to the button. Inside the event handler, set the carted M state variable to an empty array, effectively clearing the cart. Step 8. Style the application. Use CSS or a CSS framework, for example Bootstrap, to style the shopping cart application and make it visually appealing. The code in the resources section contains separate files with styles that are available for download. Step 9. Test the shopping cart application. Start the development server by running npm, start or yarn start in your project's root directory. Open your web browser and visit http slash localhost 3000 to see the shopping cart application. Add items to the cart and verify that they are displayed correctly. Remove items from the cart and check that the cart updates accordingly. Lecture 5. To get the most out of this programming tutorial, I recommend first downloading the text file with step-by-step -step instructions from the Resources section. Try working through the project on your own before watching the video. Hands-on practice is the best way to quickly learn a new coding language. Step 1. Set up the project. Create a new directory for your project. Open a terminal and navigate to the project directory. Run the command npx create react app color palette generator to create a new react project called color palette generator. Step 2. Create the color palette component in the src folder. Create a new file called Color Palette DS. Open Color Palette DS in your preferred code editor. Import React and use state at the top of the file. Create a functional component called color palette using the arrow function syntax. Inside the color palette function, declare a state variable called colors using the use state hook. Initialize it to an empty array. Render a heading or a placeholder for the color palette.
Step 3. Generate random colors. Write a function that generates a random color. Use the useState hook to store the generated colors in the colors state variable. When the component mounts, generate a random color palette using the function and update the colors state variable. Step 4. Display the color palette map over the color state variable and render individual color swatches. Style the color swatches using CSS or a CSS framework to make them visually appealing. Step 5. Implement a Generate New Palette button. Render a button labeled Generate New Palette. Add an on-click event handler to the button. Inside the event handler, generate a new random color palette and update the color's state variable. Step 6. Allow users to save favorite palettes. Implement a feature that allows users to save their favorite color palettes.
add a button or icon to each color swatch to allow users to save the color to their favorites. Store the saved color palettes in a separate state variable. Step 7. Display saved palettes. Create a separate component called Saved Palettes. Render the saved color palettes and their associated colors in the Saved Palettes component.
Step 8. Style the application. Use CSS or a CSS framework to style the color palette generator and make it visually appealing. Customize the colors, fonts, and layout to create an engaging user interface. Step 9. Test the color palette generator. Save the changes to your files. Make sure the development server is still running in the terminal. Go to your browser window and refresh the page to see the color palette generator. Click the Generate New Palette button and verify that a new color palette is generated. Test the saving and displaying of favorite color palettes. Lecture 6. To get the most out of this programming tutorial, I recommend first downloading the text file with step-by-step -step instructions from the Resources section. Try working through the project on your own before watching the video. Hands-on practice is the best way to quickly learn a new coding language. Prior to beginning, please obtain the file Incorrect IJs from the resources. Step 1. Import Statement. The import statement is incorrect for using the useState hook from React. Step 2. Function Component. The component should be defined as a function component, not a class component. Step 3. State declaration. The state declaration using the use state hook is almost correct. However, the let keyword is missing before count set count. Step 4. Event handler. The increment function is not declared correctly. It should be declared using the const keyword. Step 5. Return statement. The return statement inside a function component can only have a single root element. The root element is missing. Lecture 7. To get the most out of this programming tutorial, I recommend first downloading the text file with step-by-step -step instructions from the Resources section. Try working through the project on your own before watching the video. Hands-on practice is the best way to quickly learn a new coding language. Prior to beginning, please obtain the file Incorrect IJs from the Resources. Step 1. The useState hook is not imported correctly. Step 2. The count variable is incremented incorrectly in the handle increment function. Step 3. The closing parenthesis for the handle decrement function is missing the curly braces. Step 5. The onClick event handler for the increment button is incorrectly written. Step 6. The closing tag is missing a forward slash. Lecture 8. To get the most out of this programming tutorial, I recommend first downloading the text file with step-by-step -step instructions from the Resources section. Try working through the project on your own before watching the video. Hands-on practice is the best way to quickly learn a new coding language. Prior to beginning, please obtain the file Incorrect IJs from the Resources. Mistake 1. Incorrect naming of the component. Make sure the component name is in Pascal case. Update to-do list to Toto list. Mistake 2. Using prompt for user input. Using prompt for user input is not the recommended approach in React. Instead, consider using a form input field or a modal component to collect user input.
Mistake 3. Attempting to directly assign a new value to todos. To fix this, update the clear todos function to use the set todos function to clear the todos. Mistake 4. Missing parentheses in return statement. Make sure to include the parentheses in return statement within the total list function. Mistake 5. Immediate invocation of delete to do. To fix this, wrap the delete to do function call in an arrow function to avoid immediate invocation. Mistake 6. Missing key prop in the mapped list items. To fix this, provide a unique key prop to each list item by using a unique identifier, such as the index. Lecture 9. To get the most out of this programming tutorial, I recommend first downloading the text file with step-by-step -step instructions from the Resources section. Try working through the project on your own before watching the video. Hands-on practice is the best way to quickly learn a new coding language. Prior to beginning, please obtain the file incorrect digest from the resources. Mistake 1. The wrong package was used to import the use state hook. Mistake 2. Make sure to provide an initial values for the use state hooks. Mistake 3. The function handle name change is missing the set name function name. Mistake 4. The function handle email change is missing the value of the target element. Mistake 5. The function handle message change is missing the E parameter. Mistake 6. The function handle submit is missing the prevent default action. Mistake 7. The name element is lacking the HTML for attribute. Mistake 8. The name element is lacking the on change and ID attributes. Mistake 9. The email element lacks the HTML for attribute. Mistake 10. The on change event in the email element has an incorrect function name. Mistake 11. The closing tag is missing for the email element. Mistake 12. The button type attribute is missing for button element. Lecture 10. To get the most out of this programming tutorial, I recommend first downloading the text file with step-by-step -step instructions from the resources section. Try working through the project on your own before watching the video. Hands-on practice is the best way to quickly learn a new coding language. Prior to beginning, please obtain the file incorrect digest from the resources. Mistake 1. Rename the function addtocart to follow the proper naming convention by changing it to addItemToCart. Mistake 2. Correct the usage of the spread operator in set items. Mistake 3. Add a unique key prop to each lie element rendered inside the map function to avoid a warning. The key can be set as the index of each item. Mistake 4. Add parentheses around the parameter in the map function to fix the mistake. Mistake 5. Wrap the text inside each lie element with curly braces to display the item correctly.
Mistake 6. Add a missing closing tag at the end of the return statement. Mistake 7. Update the first button's on-click event handler to use a function reference instead of invoking the function directly. Mistake 8. Update the button's text to make it more descriptive. For example, change both buttons' text to add product 1 to cart and add product 2 to cart. Mistake 9. Add the export default shopping cart.